Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Dex Lab Analytics. My name is Diharika Rai and in this particular video, I will be talking about a library called Pandas Book, which helps you create quite interactive plots using Python programming language. So if you want to learn more, please keep on watching. As I said, Pandas Book helps you create quite interactive plots. That means you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can select which which plot you want to see. You can create tabs, you can create multiple subplots and that too you can use a browser for the same. That means your plots will be visible on the browser. You can also choose the option uh, to plot your graphs on the Jupyter Notebook itself. But before doing all that, you need to first install Pandas Book. So first what we are going to do is we are going to write in our uh, code line cell we are going to write exclamation mark pip install that is python installation package install pandas book. In my case I, I already had the library so it is saying requirement already satisfied in case you do not have that particular library it will say successfully installed or something like that. Once you have installed the, the library, what you're going to do is you're going to import the same library. So here, since I'll be using pandas, so I'm also importing pandas as pd, import numpy as np. Now from book, from book library, I am importing, I am calling out plotting plotting module and from that module I am calling out figure method. In this particular library we also need to make figures like we did in our matplotlib library. So if you haven't watched my uh, uh, previous videos what you can do is click on the i button and you will be directed to those videos. Uh, it is necessary uh, for you to first watch those videos and then come back to this uh, this particular video so that you develop more understanding about plots and graphs. So here from from book IO that is input output I am also importing output underscore notebook. This particular method what it does it it helps you um, build your plot on the Jupyter notebook itself. In case if you want to plot your Jupyter uh, you want to plot your graph in a next tab or in another browser you can use output underscore file instead so what i'm going to do is i'm also going to create since i do not have any uh, particular data what i'm going to do is i'm also going to create a random data set in front of you so that you understand how you can create your own data set and then practice your pl plotting methods and all that stuff in your Jupyter notebook. Also, I am importing this show method which helps you sh uh, showcase your plot or visualize your plot on the on the Jupyter notebook itself or in the HTML format in the next browser itself. So uh, I am also going to import output underscore file method so that we are able to import plot our graph in the next tab as well and then I am going to run this entire code just to see if there is any error. We do not have any error that means we are ready to create our random data set. So the first thing I am going to do is I am going to write np.random.seed. What it does is it helps you um, get the same numbers from a random set of numbers when you are creating a random data. So this 7 is nothing but suppose that I want a between 0 to 100 between these numbers I want 5 numbers to be generated randomly. So it can be 1, it can be 95, it can be 3, then it can be 13, it can be 45. 45. So these are random numbers. Now if I am going to use np.seed method, what it is going to do is, it is going to fix these 
it will it is going to fix these random numbers for me so suppose that i write random np seed and this uh, this is the value i get five numbers 1 2 3 4 and 5 these are the five numbers i am getting when i run a method called random okay and what will happen is that i am saying that i want random numbers from this value z from between this value 0 to 100 so what will happen is that once i write random dot seed and i run it each time i will get this particular value only instead of random numbers like suppose that for 2 i get 95 65 45 33 and 2 so now each time when i run this by writing 2 in if within the parenthesis i will get this random number when the range is between 0 to 100 so what it does is that suppose that i have built an analysis and i have got that uh, suppose that uh, between 0 and 100 if i get five values this is completely hypothetical i get five values and those five values according to my analysis give you a plot like this now if my friend run this runs this entire thing so what happens is that he gets entirely new numbers because i said between 0 and 0 and 100 a random number which i have generated is giving me a plot like this so suppose that my my friend regenerates a random number between 0 and 100 he might not he or she might not get a plot like this but instead it he or she would get this kind of a plot so to keep the values fixed that the number of generated fixed we write seed and within that i can write any number if i want to it can be 1 it can be 2 it can be 3 it can be 4 or anything i just need same number to be written by me and my friend to get same numbers so suppose that if i am uh, if i have a value again from 0 to 100 i am uh, taking out five numbers so it can be uh, 95 13 12 20 and so on and so forth now if i run this i get these values now if my friend writes one within the parenthesis he will also get or he, she will also get the same number as 95 13 12 Twenty and so on and so forth. So now, I when I build my analysis on something, these numbers, and I say that when I plot these uh, these lines, these numbers, I get a plot like this. So the other person will also get the plot like this because the number is same. For for that purposes, we need seed method here, and the number inside could be anything. Now, getting back to the Jupyter notebook. i am creating a random number np dot random dot rand 100 with seed 7 and then i am printing the length of the data so when i am saying that i want 100 random numbers at the end i will get 100 as a result right mm -hmm. and then after that what i am doing is that i am using a variable b here which is which is an array that is np dot array which has monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and days of the week name now what i want in particular when what i want is that each time my loop runs i get monday or tuesday or wednesday in a particular column my days column that means i want this entire array this entire array arrays each day to be repeated such that i could be able to create a data of 100 observations in a single column 
so i have b here now again i also have a c variable which has nothing in it and i variable which has zero value now what i am doing is i am i am i am just adding this a in a loop in a for loop now each value of j is in j and within a c variable that has nothing in it just empty quotes i am adding each value of i i has zero here and i am adding this b and b is what my array so here what i am doing is i am just creating indexes for monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday so each time this loop runs my index changes and within this this within the c string i get these data sets these monday tuesday wednesday strings now i am adding this to a c variable so in the first time i get zero here and b zero is monday so monday is added to a variable c and there is a space between them and now i am updating the updating my i data now if my i is greater than equal to 7 that means in case my i is greater than 7 then again i am initializing i with 0 so what you will do is that each time this loop runs my index is 0 then 1 2 3 4 5 6 each time it is 6 or is equal to 7 in particular every time it is equals to 7 greater than or equal to 7 then what will happen is that i will come inside here and then we will have i equals to 0 again that means again the indexes will start running from 0 1 2 3 so i am just creating a data i am just creating a data which has monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday and then again it starts with monday tuesday and sat uh, tuesday wednesday thursday 100 times this is happening why because my loop will learn 100 times because in a i have 100 data available data observations available length of a is 100 so that is why this entire loop is going to run 100 times now now once i have this column here in i have this column what i am going to do is i am adding c equals to c dot split method now what does split method do it creates since the data was adding into an since the data we were adding into a string if i print that as well print c we have a string like so so what split method does is what split method does is it helps you split the entire data into and and stores in in particular into and converts the c data or string into multiple into array into a list so here if i print c my list is starting from here and ending at this position so split method is changing the string into a list now I, all i need to do is i need to remove this space so for that what i am doing is 
I am using C dot pop method, wherein I am writing the index number zero. So what will happen? It will remove the zero index from this list. Now I also want hundred dates to be generated. For that, I am using z equals to pd dot date underscore range method. Within that, I am randomly writing a date that is here. And then I am writing for how how many times I want that date to be um, created, or how many times how many times I want a date to be created. So I want hundred periods. That means I want hundred dates to be generated in a sequence. Once done, I am also creating df equals to pd dot data frame wherein I am writing c. That is my splitted list, and giving it a name days. And as we all know, when we add add something in our data frame method as key, it instantly changes into the column name. So here, with for C data, we have days column name. For sales, for sales, we have. For the sales column, we have a that is randomly generated hundred values. It can be whatever. And for date column, I am using z, which I have created here. And then I am just looking at. I am just going to look at the data. How well my data has been created? Print. We've been able to create our data, and I am going to run this. And since head method gives uh, top five rows in all the columns, so here you go. We have zero index pair, days Monday, sales, this date, two thousand and ten, one one, and then again and then again we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we have data here. We, I mentioned rand. Method, so it gives not uh, it gives uniform distribu uniformly distributed data that is between zero and one hundred data values. So we have this instead. So now what we are going to do is we are going to use df dot two underscore csv and we are going to save this entire data frame df which we have created into a random into a file csv file which names run which is named as random underscore data and i am just writing index equals to false so that we do not get an index value when we save our data set now next what we need to do is i am just mentioning here out output underscore notebook this particular method is going to help us create a um, our graphs in the Jupyter notebook. Now I have a variable df underscore d, which states if the days column is equals to Monday, double equals to Monday, then save the entire data into df df underscore d. Again, another variable we have df underscore d one. And in case the days column is double equals to Friday, then save the entire data into df underscore d1. So what we are doing is we are only take filtering Monday's data and Friday's data, and then we are going to plot our graph. Now for plot for plotting, now we are going to use a variable name as plot and. And we are going to use a figure method which we have already imported from plotting module. And within that figure method, what I am doing is I am writing the access title here by using the argument x under access underscore x axis underscore type equals to date type. And on the y-axis, I'm using the argument as x underscore axis underscore label as date. And then I'm using, I'm just giving a data type here, and then then I'm labeling the same. 
and then I'm using y axis label sales and I'm using plotting width that is width of my entire canvas 500 height of my entire canvas as 300 and the title of the entire plot as multi distribution and where I want my title to be that is above you can also write uh, as an option you can also write below right and left now for the first plot for the first um, line I am writing plot dot line method using line method and on the x axis axis I am using date column of that df underscore d and on the y axis I am using df underscore d sales that is same same data that we have stored so for the Monday what is the sale and how is the sale changing in accordance to date what should be the line color so I am using argument line underscore color that is red and legend label plot 1 for the second line plot dot line on the x axis again I am using date of date of the Friday's data and y equals to sales of that Friday and the line color I am choosing is green and I am plotting legend underscore label I am using the graph label as or the legend label as plot 2 and then I am using show parenthesis plot because ultimately we are plotting the entire graph or using objects to create this uh, the plot and all the plots or all everything is attached to this particular variable so it is again an object oriented library with which you can create uh, plots by making a lot of objects like figure and line now let's run this entire code here you go we have monthly distribution monthly distribution here we have right in the corner we have monthly distribution we have date as our x-axis since we have mentioned that the data type is date type on the x-axis type and then on the y-axis we have sales we have already mentioned that on the y-axis we are going to have our sales label and since the data is distributed between 0 and 1 with the help of as we have generated from the rand method which gives us uniform uh, which gives us uniformly distributed data between 0 and 1 so we have the limit as 1 here and minimum limit as 0 we have legend for plot 1 and plot 2 and we have few tabs here so this particular tab helps me move my graph and shift my graph left right up and down this particular graph helps me zoom a uh, tab helps me zoom a particular portion of the graph this particular icon or tab resets my plot the way it was previously and if you wheel zoom if you want to use your mouse for zooming in and zooming out you can use this particular tab if you want to save your graph you can simply click on this particular graph and your graph will be saved like so work plot png in the form of png
and in case you want to go to the, that particular website that is books website pandas books website you can go there and check out their website as well with the help of this icon here and this is nothing but click the mark to learn more about book tools so you can also learn more about the tools which are available in book library So that's it for today's video. If you want to learn more about Pandas Walk Library or you want to know more about us, you can just click on the website or go to the website www.dexlabanalytics.com or you can call, call us at the number on the screen. Uh, on the screen and, and please click on the like button and subscribe our channel if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye-bye. Take care.